of the eighth episode of the series Decolonizing the Mind. Today I will give a short talk on the martyrdom of Hassan Nasrallah, the Secretary General of Hezbollah, who was killed last week, murdered by the Zionist regime. Um, so I'll deal with three short topics. Who was Nasrallah? Has Hassan Nasrallah, the significance of his martyrdom and the impact on the cause of the liberation struggle. So Nasrallah was born in 1960 and he was uh, very young, 22 years old, uh, when uh, Hezbollah was established by Shia leaders in Lebanon uh, to fight the um, uh, 1982 Israeli invasion of Lebanon. The group was created with the support of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps of Iran that trained and mentored the group. And uh, Nasrallah became uh, a leader, a secretary general in 1992. Uh, so he was very young and led the organization for more than 30 years before he was murdered by Sinus airstrikes. The previous Secretary General of Hezbollah, Abbas al-Musawi, uh, was also assassinated by Israel in 1992, and then he was succeeded by uh, Nasrallah. So this is not the first uh, Secretary General who was killed by the Israelis. And look what happened after the murder of Abbas al-Musawi, uh, the previous Secretary General, he was succeeded by Nasrallah. So imagine even if Nasrallah would be killed, there will be somebody in place following him up and do a job as good as he has done and maybe even better because if we look at uh, the historical significance of Nasrallah, uh, after he took over uh, 30 years ago, he managed to build a formidable political and military organization that Hezbollah is today. And uh, he established Hezbollah as a central part of the axis of resistance. Uh, and he, he led Hezbollah in defeating Israel in the 2006 war when Israel invaded Lebanon as they are doing uh, now they were bombing Lebanon, they invaded Lebanon with troops and were forced to uh, draw back. And he was leading response uh, to the ongoing Gaza genocide by opening a second front, military front, after the uh, start of the genocide in Gaza. So um, what Nasrallah has did, done uh, when he came, became Secretary General, is enormous and it is acknowledged in Lebanon, in the Arab world, in the anti-imperialist world, that his contribution has been major. Now, if that's the case, how do we look at the effect of his martyrdom? And it's important to understand this in a mindset of the colonial left, of the Zionists, of the US empire, their mindset is that if you kill the leader, you kill the organization. That's not, that's not true. Uh, and certainly not for an organization as Hezbollah because the previous leader of Hezbollah, the secretary general was killed and yet the organization grew in strength. So uh, in the, mentality of anti-imperialist leaders and fighters, martyrdom is not regarded as a defeat, but as a victory for the martyr. Uh, when Che Guevara, who is, is, is not religious, you know, said that it's uh, better to uh, die standing uh, instead of living by uh, uh, on your, bending on your knees, uh, and basically General Soleimani, you know, who celebrate martyrdom, uh, they are saying that 
if a leader of the resistance dies in the struggle uh, against imperialism, that's an honorable death than dying of a disease of cancer or whatever. It's an honorable death um, if you die fighting uh, because your death is the inspiration for others to move on. So to understand what the impact of uh, this uh, murder is by Israel and United States, because it's not just Israel, it's supported uh, uh, militarily, financially, uh, intelligence-wise uh, by the United States uh, and, and, the, and the West. So colonial, their colonial view is that you achieve victory by crushing the enemy. And they haven't learned from anti-colonial resistance. Take Vietnam, which defeated the French colonial empire and the most mightiest uh, military force on earth, the US empire. They defeated them. But that defeat comes with sacrifices where a million people, a million were killed by the United States in the Second War. And uh, it is um, uh, incredible to see how hundreds and thousands in, in Gaza, 40,000, and in uh, Lebanon now uh, over 1,000 people have been killed in Vietnam, a million, and yet the Vietnamese have won. You know, there are many more examples, Algeria, where you see that uh, killing the victims of colonial oppression uh, doesn't guarantee the eternal victory of colonialism. Uh, the reverse is true. You can't stop the tide of progress. And there are bitter moments in those struggles when you know, prominent leaders are, are killed and martyred. Uh, but the end result that people fighting for liberation sooner or later will get their freedom, that is the law of history. Now, we are going to tough times now. Probably uh, we are going to see a regional war where United States empire put its full weight in trying to attack Iran, that is on the agenda now. And uh, so we're going to tough times where many more people will die in the coming month. Uh, but I'm, of a, I'm a firm believer of the law of history that freedom can't be stopped. And sooner or later, the oppressed people of the world will, will win. And we will remember leaders like Esrallah as leaders who gave us an example of how to move forward. So um, that is where we stand now. Uh, I hope to uh, see you next week.